tonight Oh, down beside that red firelight Oh, you're gonna let it all hang out Fat bottom girls, you make the rocking world go round In a world full of overweight, obese, McDonald-loving individuals, one man stands alone. His goal in life is simple, burning fat one calorie at a time. In today's society, more than one-third of U.S. adults are labeled as obese. This one man is out to help one girl who is unable to make right decisions in choosing fat foods versus regular foods. Which one will she choose in the end? This man's name is The Exerciser. All the way from New Jersey to Greece, we observe a particular experiment of the exerciser, Stephanie Kaplan. Worldwide obesity has more than doubled since 1980. In 2008, more than 1.4 billion adults, 20 and older, were overweight. Of these, over 200 million men and nearly 300 million women were obese. 65% of the world's population live in countries where overweight and obesity kills more people than underweight. More than 40 million children under the age of 5 were overweight in 2010. Obesity, a medical condition in which excess body fat has accumulated to the extent that it may have an adverse effect on health, leading to reduced life expectancy and or increased health problems. Overweight, having more body fat than is optimally healthy. I know what to do. I must call the exerciser. I'm the exerciser. My goal is simple, to exercise your demons. If you have a problem with weight, I am your solution. For a simple rate of $500 per hour, I can solve any weight issue. Whether your uh, weight issue has been brought on by emotional distress, family history, or anything else, I am your man. I will kill your weight problem with a six pack of diet drinks and two guns to shoot you. The Exerciser. Call 1 800 You Are Fat. Hello, is this the Exerciser? Did somebody call the Exerciser? Show me the subject. Follow me. Oh my god, this is worse than I thought. Oh no, this just won't do. This just won't do. Stand up! Turn around. Subject is in uh, stage one, pro mortis. I believe this is a uh, tier three. As assistance to the exerciser, he asked us to carry out his plan. First things first, we needed to obtain a sample. After selecting a random sample of homerooms, we filmed the exerciser's first subject. As the assistants, we put the original chip in the subject's right hand and the fat-free chip in the subject's left. Then we asked her to close her eyes. After she closed her eyes, we asked her to eat one chip fully and then the other chip. After she ate both chips, it was time for the decision to be made. Madison could tell a difference, but which chip did she like better? The first one. Okay. So Madison liked the full fat chip better. This is not a good sign. Our second subject was a whole nother story. 
We replicated the same procedures as we did with the first subject, but obtained a different result. After the subject ate both chips fully, we asked the same question. Can you taste a difference? This was the reply. Did you taste a difference? Patrick, I taste Yasmin, no difference. Carol, John. Thank you. <laughs>The exerciser's assistants were getting frustrated. What were we to tell the exerciser if no one picked the fat-free chips? After conducting this experiment on numerous individuals, we came to a final subject who shocked us with his reply. We handed him the original chip in his right hand and the fat-free chip in his left hand. We watched him anxiously, hoping to see if there was some hope left for the exerciser. After the subject said he noticed the difference, we asked the life-determining question. Which chip did you like better? This was the reply. Success! We feel sorry for the exerciser. Though he was able to help Stephanie conquer obesity, he couldn't help the rest of American society. The data we gathered from our experiment was exactly what the exerciser had feared. Our experiment involved 43 subjects. The majority of the subjects could, in fact, tell a difference between the fat-free chips and the original chips. 30 out of the 43 could tell a difference. However, out of these 30 people, 20 individuals chose the original full-fat chips as their favorite chip. Using a test proportion and a he-squared test for the experiment, we collected a p-value of 0 0.0095. The p-values from both the proportion test and the he-squared goodness of fit test resulted in very statistically significant numbers, allowing the rejection of the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. In our findings, the proportion test would probably be the better fit in the end to describe our results. This is due to the fact that we had a simple yes or no answer to the one question in the experiment. The exerciser's only hope is to save the American society from obesity and overweight problems. But as Americans, we are going to have to shape up and choose the right foods for our bodies. We have to learn how to avoid the natural lure of fatty foods. And remember, exercise daily before the exerciser finds you.